every scientific report has proven it beyond doubt that uh, we are facing severe consequences because of climate change. The temperature of uh, Earth has risen significantly beyond pre-industrialization levels and it continues to rise. It is also clear to most of the world that we need to now take drastic action to do something about it, right? And you're, every year you uh, listen to COP25, COP26, COP27, where world leaders meet and discuss what they can do about it. A large part of our emissions comes from power generation and industrial activities. Some of it also comes from things like agriculture and transportation, but the disproportionate part tends to come from uh, power and industry. So, and most of that is in control of large corporations, and that's why there's a strong push from the governments across the world for large enterprises to start setting what are called net zero goals. Worst. 2070 तक भारत नेट जीरो का लक्ष्य हासिल करेगा ये पंचामृत क्लाइमेट एक्शन में भारत का एक अभूतपूर्व योगदान होंगे I think first thing we have to realize is net zero is no longer an option, right? For any company, starting with large enterprises and then flowing down to SMEs, they will have to set a clear net zero goal. So for a large, let's say an FMCG company, most of their emissions would lie in their supply chain. So they will have to think about how to make their supply chain more sustainable. For a large services company, like a tech company, a banking company, right? a, a telecom company, etc., a large part of those emissions will lie with their employees. Right, within their workplace, the electricity that you consume, employee commute to office, your business travel, etc. Right. So, and a large part of hence reducing your emissions becomes about sustainable workplace practices. Right. Net zero transition is a fairly challenging transition for most large companies to make. Right. Part of it is because only small percentage of their emissions are in their control, which is the fuel that they burn or the electricity that they consume in their office. Right almost 80 to 90% of your emissions as a company, which are called scope three emissions, are outside your country. As Step Change, our mission is to help large companies uh, transition to net zero. We essentially offer two main types of tools, offerings to the industry today. The first one is a horizontal end-to-end -end SaaS platform for companies to measure, analyze, and report their ESG metrics. When it comes to E, it is about things like your carbon emissions or greenhouse gas emissions, air quality impact, water, waste, and other types of environmental impact. When it comes to S, it's about your employee diversity. It is about reporting things like accidents. It is about reporting other social metrics that you have. And governance is similarly about things you're doing at a board level, you know, and different types of policies that you have in your company. Yeah, so compiling ESG metrics uh, requires a lot of very different data streams. And so we work across a lot of different types of data. So this includes transactional data, this includes financial data, it includes operational data from a business. Uh, and so our goal at Step Change is to try and build uh, sophisticated models that can you know, work with these different data sets in a way that uh, assimilates them uh, into kind of you know usable and uh, and valuable ESG metrics. So at Step Change, what we do is actually try and use sophisticated AI and ML techniques to fill the gaps in both the activity data. So for example, uh, you know develop sophisticated heuristics um, that go from you know the the, account, the sector that a company is in, the, how large it is, things like that, and try and estimate uh, things like you know employee commute and other. Um, operational data so we we use kind of these techniques to help fill out the the activity data we also use um, sophisticated statistical techniques to try and fill in the gaps in the emission factor data the second set of tools that we build is where we go fairly deep on a sector by sector level this is to help companies think about how to reduce their emissions right? now these tools can help you think about product development right what choices do you make on raw materials, processes, packaging, and how will they impact the sustainability of the final product? 
A lot of work uh, in India in particular tends to be very consulting heavy and for good reason. There are very good reasons for that. Uh, but what we are trying to do and what we've been able to do effectively so far is actually productize a lot of that, uh, that work. And so what that allows us to do is scale much faster and provide it provide these same services at a much lower cost to our consumers. At a high level, data fidelity, data quality are always concerns in this space, primarily because it's a relatively new field. Uh, a lot of companies don't keep uh, this information in-house and they're still thinking through how best to uh, report their own ESG metrics and how best to report their operational data that feeds into those ESG metrics. Uh, greenwashing is a big issue in this space where you know, oftentimes you hear of companies uh, touting to be very sustainable, you hear of other companies touting to uh, exclusively produce sustainable goods, things like that. Uh, and a lot of times, not always, but a lot of times these claims are based um, on not particularly well-founded kind of scientific assertions. Every company in India and across the world needs to know that they need to set a net zero target. We need to want to help each and every one of them to set a net zero target that they believe they can achieve and then truly empower them and their teams to achieve that target. Right? And to do that in the next 10 to 10, 20 years and not hopefully over the next 50 years, which might leave us with very few options in terms of uh, the impact of climate change.